What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Yo, dude, you made me poop my pants a little. You can see today that winter is finally making its uh, way on Cape Town. It's been raining pretty much all day. Some of the more eagle-eyed of my viewers may have noticed that I'm uh, not running with my cell phone. I'd like to say a huge thank you to this video sponsor, Redbeard Riding Academy giving this little baby to me. It's a GoPro Hero 3. Many of you guys who have seen my earlier videos towards the end of last year would have noticed I'm not really very impressed with GoPro. Looking at this Hero 3, knowing how old of a camera it is and looking at what features it has, man, I must tell you, this is what GoPro used to be like. It's the first time I'm actually filming with it on the bike, but just the overall build quality, the features that it had. I mean, this thing had 4K7 footage on a Hero 3, and that's like probably, what, 8 to 10 years old by now? So that's really impressive, like I must say. GoPro was really ahead of the game once upon a time. And man, I'm just disappointed. that my experience with the GoPro Max has revealed something very, very much in the opposite direction. So yeah, I thought I would tell you guys a little bit of a, a story about something that's seeming to be prevalent, especially now that the roads are becoming a little bit more dangerous for motorcyclists. Number one, it's uh, winter is approaching us, so it gets dark very early. I mean, it's not even six o'clock yet, and it's the light is fading pretty fast and um, not only does it get dark fairly quickly but uh, my morning commute is still in darkness and it's only getting worse we've still got about three months to go before the uh, solstice so yeah we've got uh, quite a bit of time before the weather starts swinging its way and we've got longer daylight hours again so I wanted to talk about this wonderful thing called situational awareness and uh, more specifically defensive riding habits around that and um, well I think situational awareness speaks for itself in the sense that it's, it's telling you that you know you always need to be aware of what's going on around you behind in front etc whenever you're operating a vehicle not just motorbikes but cars too um, but specifically, I want to address defensive riding as a result of situational awareness because, you see, I'm keeping a really good following distance from the police car in front of me. And not because it's a police car in front of me or whatever, but because he's got three cars in front of him that are driving really slow. And as you can see, that cushion has just been absorbed by the fact that somebody was driving hopelessly slow. Now, had I been riding as close as he is to the car in front of him, well, I would have had to take more evasive action just to try and slow down. Oh, dude, you moved over for me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Oh, this damn second gear. So yes, as you guys just saw, that uh, wonderful thing that just happened to my bike is actually one of the reasons why I released this video that's exclusive to my Patreons. I swear this wasn't a planned plug, but I'm going with it. So if you want to check out this video, check the links in the description, become a Patreon, support this channel, you get early access and exclusive access to my content. So what I was saying about uh, your, your defensive riding is that you always want to be in a position where whenever something crazy is going to happen on the road, be it somebody driving like a clown or somebody slamming on brakes or whatever the case may be, you've got yourself enough space to react as minimally as possible. Example, instead of riding right up to this guy's backside, and then having to swerve or change lanes, I could just roll off the throttle as I see that that distance between him and I is shortening. I can just roll off the throttle. I can make my moves 
more minimal in order for me to make sure that I'm safe whilst I'm on the roads by paying attention to everything that's ahead and behind of me and basically that's pretty much it <laughs> um, you know the, the important part about riding a bike or even a car like I, I don't I don't know how to stress it enough but the concepts that I follow when I'm riding on a motorbike is the exact same things that I tend to follow when I'm driving in a car so you know like this vehicle that's here might decide to cross lanes so instead of staying in the left of my lane I'll move over to the middle or the very right obviously I'm going around a blind corner so I'm going to do my best not to let my mirror or my shoulders or any part of me or the bike cross over that center white line but as I'm coming here, I notice the road straight is out, there's a taxi moving nice and slowly up ahead. So there's a good chance that that guy is going to move in front of me. So I let him go. I don't speed up, I don't try and get ahead of him. I just let him make his move. I'm still moving well within a comfortable speed. I'm not being inconvenienced by the fact that this bloke is ahead of me. And, um, well, I see he won't move over because of the other car ahead of him, which is fine. I predict that. I wait, I take it easy, I let him pass, and guaranteed, once he's passed, he'll move over for me. Look at that! Look at that. It's like I'm psychic, man. Now we come up here, fast and easy. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate you. And off we go. And that's all there is to it. It's as easy as just guessing what's going to lie around the next corner. What the cars ahead of you are going to do. Look at that beautiful view. I'm a poet and I doesn't know it. Oh. And then just taking it nice and easy and making sure you look after your own interests while you're out on the bike. Oh. See, there's, a, there's a very dangerous problem here and uh, oh, here come the crosswinds brace for it actually they weren't so bad Oh, it feels good, man. Oh, it feels good. So you'll see now, there was nothing in front of me, so I went at a pace that was reasonable for the conditions. There's vehicles ahead of me again. I'm slowing down nice and easy. Slowing down a lot more. And we're riding 60 and 100. That's okay. It's okay. We'll just be patient. Both of them will... Nah, nah. I reckon the, the polo will go straight, try and pass and then move over for me. That's predicted. Thank you very much, people. Now that's pretty much the best way that you're going to stay safe out on the roads. And I mean, this applies when you're doing open road traveling, when you're sitting in traffic, when you're lane splitting. You just have to be alert and imagine what the cars may or may not do. Try and predict their patterns, because I promise you when you ride for long enough, when you pay attention to the patterns, you become able to recognize them so, so easily. It becomes like second nature. You just know, like now this guy's going to merge into, into the road in front of me. Oh, it left indicator, cool. Maybe you confused your direction, so I'll just make some space. And carry on cruising up. 
on the road and just enjoying it. You see, riding isn't this big, massively complicated thing. It's just a case of being smart enough to think about how you want to survive out on the roads and what risks there are to take. So, like a lot of people will look at me and think, oh, this guy might be riding drunk because, you know, he's all over the road. When in fact, I'm on the left of this lane to make sure I avoid any hazards. I see a pedestrian there, I move to the right. There's a stationary vehicle, I move to the middle because there's oncoming traffic. There might be people coming out from there, so I'm careful. He might cut in front of me. I'm processing all that information every single microsecond and adapting accordingly. I don't just go, oh shit, I'm going to crash. Ah! I react. I enforce the behavior and I force Beastie to go where I want him to go. And once you start making those, those conscious efforts to understand the traffic patterns and what you're doing and counter steering, like if I, if I push left, I go left. If I push right, I go right. Understanding those concepts around control of your motor vehicle, of your motorbike, that is the key to staying alive out there. Now I wanted to let you guys know about Redbeard Riding Academy. You see, they offer advanced riding courses. They actually offer courses where they'll take you out to some place like Hellsworth or even here maybe, I don't know. And they'll give you strategic ways for you to get out there and go ride on the streets, pushing the boundaries of where you're comfortable riding. Because let's be honest, we don't just ride a motorcycle because it goes slow. We ride a motorcycle because we like to have fun with them. So these guys offer courses where you can get on your, on your bike and you can really start learning how to think. Check that, you see? Recognize the pattern. If I just lane split, I would have been in the side of that vehicle. Recognize the patterns, guys. Dan Dan the Fireman has got great videos about identifying and recognizing the patterns and it's those things that are going to keep you safe. He calls it being a smart rider and let me tell you something, it's very smart to be a smart rider. Like the vehicles that are speeding up behind me, right? I know they're there because I was paying attention. So either I'm going to speed up or ride at a speed that I'm comfortable with and then move over so they can just pass me without a hassle. But Redbeard Riding Academy will teach you these things. So if you want to check them out and you really want to get your riding to a safer level where you're less likely to get into stupid accidents on the street, go check out the links in the description. Go support them. They're really good at what they're doing. And they really love bikes. So go check them out, support them, and tell them Matt sent you. I'm going to turn around here and head back up over Sir Lowry's Pass. And, um, yeah, I'll just... Uh, you're going to take it easy. You're going to take it easy. Now imagine if I had maintained my speed before passing that guy with that taxi in the oncoming lane. That is why you have to be so careful when you're out on the roads. Well, my casual peoples, that's pretty much going to end this video. And I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something. Maybe share it with a friend who you think could use a, a pointer or two about staying safe out there. Remember to check out my sponsor, Redbeard Riding Academy. Links in the description. Check out my Patreon page for exclusive and early content. Link in the description as well. And I want to say a huge shout out to my patrons. 
for supporting this channel. You guys mean a lot to me and your support really does go a long way. If you can't help out financially, just do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it doesn't cost you anything and it goes a long way in supporting me. Life is going to throw a ton at you, as always. But whatever it does, just remember, don't look down, look ahead. And until next time, people, ride safe.